Don't let me drown. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name is Lydia, and I make mental videos here on YouTube pretty much every single day. Today, I'm making a video talking about mania and how to recognize mania and how to help someone who is experiencing mania. To those of you who don't know, I have borderline personality disorder. A key feature of this disorder is mania, and people don't realize that. They think you have to be diagnosed with bipolar, and I did until last week. And you can have by you don't need to have bipolar to experience mania. I filmed a video when I was manic, and I'm going to be doing a whole video on what mania looks like and that's going to be in there. Basically today I'm going to give you little tips and advice for how you can help or support someone you know personally that is going through mania. And let me just put this out there. If they don't want to receive help, there's not a lot you can do to make them. A quick little story time I didn't mention on camera. A person who lives in the same block that I live in at the moment, she lives downstairs, she is sweet but she isn't taking her medication at the moment and she is spiralling like she's paranoid in my opinion i believe she has schizophrenia i don't know because i don't know her but thought i'd add this little mini 20 second story in because i do know a thing about this and unless they're at a point of which where they can be sectioned which means taken to hospital against their will so the number one thing to not do is to not play with them yes they might seem bubbly and energetic and it might be fun to have a laugh with them but in reality they're breaking like they're spiraling they're running so quickly and it's gonna crash into a major depressive episode so don't play with the emotions don't don't make it a laughable matter to keep the environment safe and yes people with mania are very unlikely to commit suicide or self-harm it's the act accidental injuries that comes into play here. Believe me, I know, last week I hit myself in the head with a hammer. Accidentally, I was hanging up very light and it fell on my head and I hit myself with a hammer. I fell off a chair, I fell off my bed, I fall on stairs. I'm very clumsy when I'm, if I'm thinking too quickly, I am not going to think about putting one foot in front of the other to stay stable. I'm thinking about what I'm doing in an hour. So make sure the environment is safe. Make sure someone can keep an eye on them, keep them supported and that make sure they know they've got someone. The next step would be to get a doctor involved or call their mental health team, call whoever is their nearest like like mental health team or GP or Amy, whatever, is make sure the person gets rest. Now, mainly it means you are awake, basically. I'm very, very simplifying this. So, but in mania, you're very awake. You need to make sure they sleep. Sleep is key when it comes to mania. And if they don't sleep, it's gonna get worse. If they sleep, it might stay at that level, it might go up, it might go down. You've got more of a chance of stabilizing out if that person is getting rest. The next one would be to know the warning signs. Know the warning signs of when things are starting to get out of control because you can't be expected to know all of them. But learn a few of the signs they show before they get to manic and before they get to psychotic. Like knowing the signs is so important for it. The next one would be if they're on medication, make sure they take it. I know. Yeah, Lydia tells you to take your medication. If you if you're prescribed medication, that's what it's there for? It's there for you. Just screw the stigma. stigma. So the next one would be in emergencies. If you genuinely can't take care of the person, take them to A and E, get a mental health assessment done, and see what they say. And then after you come down from the mania, do you know what the job is then? Find the trigger. If you know the trigger, you can do stuff to prevent a relapse of that episode. It's all about prevention. Like. Yes, you can take tablets, yes, you can do this, yes, you can do that, but you cannot change someone's brain chemistry. Like, you can't change what's going to happen. If they're manic, you need to follow certain steps to try and bring them back down to a more reasonable level. And that's, like, their baseline. Everyone has a different baseline. Some people are happier, some people are just monotone, and then there's me, who's just always depressed. Um, but well, when I get manic. So when I'm manic, I'm still also depressed, so it's quite a complicated thing. These are just a few little tips that I wanted to share with you guys today. The Patreon shout out will be at the end of the video as it is always. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Peace. I actually feel like I did a good job with that video. Let's get a thumbnail on that one. But yeah. Peace guys.